Hello and welcome to Institches. This machine came in with a fault and I've already done some troubleshooting with the machine but it hasn't really improved things a lot so I thought I'd just show you what I've found so far. The fault was that when you put your foot on the controller the machine wouldn't run. You know I've got my foot on the controller I'm just turning the wheel and it takes off sometimes but not others uh, so when you stop sometimes it doesn't go again until you give it a, a little bit of a hand or a turn of the wheel here and away it goes you can hear it sort of stuttering a little bit there so uh, first thing I did is I checked the motor and this is the original motor from the machine it's pretty easy to extract from the machine very uh, serviceable these little Elners, very nice uh, design. I'll show you how to remove the motor later. It's pretty straightforward, three screws. Disconnect a couple of connections here. Uh, and this is the original motor. I did notice I checked the motor brushes. Now that's just a matter of you know uh, pulling back this little tab here. I won't do it again because I've already replaced these brushes and uh, just worried that these tabs could break off. I'm, I'm not a big fan of this design with the bendable tabs. You know, the more that you uh, bend them back and forward again, uh, the more chances that the uh, connection, the little tab will break right off, which can be a bit of a pain. But what I did notice uh, was the motor brushes were in a pretty sad state, especially this one here. If we get a close look here. Now, that motor brush there has still got some life left in it, uh, but you know I've changed both brushes as a matter of course. This one here is probably the crux of most of the issues. You can see that the brush is actually worn right away, and the spring here has come down onto the motor commutator here. So this is where the brushes come through. You can see a brush there contacting the commutator this part turns if I can just turn the pulley there uh, the problem with the wearing out of the brushes like this here is that as soon as that copper spring touches this commutator it can cause damage now as long as it's not run for too long like that sometimes you can get away with it and I thought I'd got away with it because I'd put the brushes in I just uh, gave the commutator a a very sort of basic sort of clean. I don't have the uh, correct, you know, tools for removing uh, the the armature and and from the uh, motor here and and putting it on a lathe and cleaning that up correctly. Uh, but I just gave it a clean. Got a lot of the carbon deposit off it. Uh, you can see that it's got dirty a little bit again. So I'll probably clean it up a little bit more. Um, but I put the uh, motor back into the machine and it ran perfectly. I thought great this problem's fixed it was doing what it was supposed to do and then gradually it started to uh, play up a little bit couldn't get it to go at all uh, for a little while there but anyway I uh, got a good known motor and put it into this this machine here and it did the same thing you know so we've still got this issue you know where it just doesn't seem to want to to go so I thought yeah there must be some other problem you know because I've got a good known good motor in here it's, it's still doing uh, it's still playing up you know I'm not sure of the state of this motor after those brushes wearing out like that I'll take the side panel off here and I'll show you what I found just make sure if you're taking the side panel off these machines uh, to disconnect the power that's very important there's live wires in behind here these are very easy to work on in this respect. Four screws here, Phillips. And you'll see what I mean once I get the cover off here. Okay. Just put those screws aside there. You'll notice that I didn't have to disconnect any wires. That's because this model relies on these pogo pins here to make the electrical connections. There'll be two connectors for the light and two for the motor. 
that's the good motor still giving us a few little issues there but what I've noticed see if you can spot any issues I mean it's a little bit dirty in here but if we have a close look at that resistor that I'm zooming in on there in the middle it's looking quite burnt and even the board around it is looking a little bit toasty so uh, you'll notice also a lot of sort of black residue I think that's just the carbon brushes you know as they're wearing they're uh, producing a little bit of uh, fine carbon dust there I suspect that this little resistor here is you know the cause of some of the issues now if we have a look at another one I've got another cover here you can see you know it's looking a lot cleaner the resistors looking more uh, or less burnt <laughs> if you know what I mean but look on this other one here this resistor up here is looking quite burnt see it's just got a bit of a black look to it I've measured it it's still measuring fine that's a 3.9 K resistor and that one is a 2.7 K resistor this one here and this particular uh, side panel the machine came out of has got one of these reefer caps these horrible reefer caps here you can see them it's that one's splitting it's already starting to fail I can just about guarantee if I plugged if I used this panel here to test this machine that as soon as I plug it in or not long afterwards that this cap capacitor here would blow um, more than likely that would blow and it would go with a bang it would give you a fright you might see a flash of uh, <laughs> like electrical arcing uh, inside the machine and it'll smoke and stink the workshop out they're horrible when, when they go uh, so as a matter of course I would replace that get rid of this on the original on the customers machine uh, they obviously moved away from the reefer style caps and they went to a better quality or that one's been replaced at some stage here's another one that uh, you know I've replaced the capacitor and I've just put a you know a modern uh, replacement that's a 0.1 microfarad x2 class capacitor that I've installed in here uh, the problem with this board here is you can see I've already robbed the uh, resistors out of here so these two resistors here uh, uh, seem to be the ones that, that burn up and you can see on the original here that that one's definitely going and that one there is you know at some stage may fail as well but uh, I think that one looks okay at this stage so I think what I'll do is I will replace the this capacitor here and maybe just use this spare part here to uh, put onto the side of the machine just to quickly test to see whether this problem has gone away and then if uh, it drives this uh, spare motor I've got here nicely well then I might even try and just put the original motor back in and see whether all the issues disappear first of all we'll desolder this uh, capacitor here I'll grab a replacement there now we'll just uh, start by removing these three screws here one here I've loosened this one here already that one that one there and you should be able to just flip this board over hopefully without taking too many connections off there I've got the soldering iron ready to go just get these little spaces off here and we should be able to just flip that oh there's the little the little speed slider here too that just uh, connects up with this little slider here on the front panel so make sure to put that back on and that should give us enough room to desolder this capacitor here I'll try and do it and keep it in shot for you it's a bit, it's a bit awkward we're trying to keep it in shot there for you as well yeah sorry if my hands get in the way there I'll try and do this there we go there's one leg one leg 
three, I think. Second leg there. There we go. See the cracking. The cracking there. That allows moisture, just humidity in the air, moisture to get into the capacitor. And it causes all sorts of issues just with uh, shorting and whatnot. And get the new one here. Install that, if I can get that leg in. You could run the machine without this capacitor if you don't have a replacement. At a pinch, I would recommend replacing it. They are reasonably, uh, the you know, very easy to come by, these capacitors. You know, electronics shops will supply these capacitors, no problem at all there. Sorry, some of this may not be in focus. Just get that resoldered there. One leg there. The other one there. Yep, that's looking good there. Let's just crop those leads off there. Okay, both leads accounted for. So we know that there's nothing floating around down in the works there to short anything out. Now that little plastic piece there just sits over these lugs here. Just over there. Should do anyway. There we go. Just like that. And that just provides a... Um, you know, a bit of protection there. Let's not forget the little switch here. That just slides on there. That's for our speed adjustment. Got the rabbit and the tortoise there. Just make sure that's on there. Now I'm just I'm going to do a quick test with this here. So, you know, I'm not going to bother replacing this at this stage, but I would definitely replace that. It's looking a little bit dodgy there. Okay, so this here is our test uh, end plate, if you like. Test electronics. So now I just want to put this back on, and as you can see, it's nice and easy. And we'll come back in here, you know, once I've tested this as well, and I'll show you the motor replacement procedure. It's pretty straightforward. It's very serviceable, very nice design. It's a pity that they don't make things as serviceable as they used to, but yeah, I won't go too far down that track. <laughs> and just get those four screws started. And we'll see how that goes. We should just be able to open that front cover there. Let's see. Oh, oh, it's got a different cable connector. Luckily, these connectors are compatible with the IEC style connector here that you'd find on the likes of a desktop computer so that's pretty handy so we've got power there okay so seems good and if I stop and go again it goes um, but let's put this in with the test panel and if that all works then I'll be uh, taking the original customers panel and uh, replacing this resistor here which I think is the cause of some of this issue so there are probably a couple of issues going on here to start with so let's quickly do that okay that's that panel off just before I put this motor here and I'm just going to wipe down the 
the commutator there. It's looking a little bit cleaner there. We'll see how it goes. Now the very easy to remove. Uh, so we start just by removing the power connections for the motor. Those two there, three screws. These happen to be posi drive screws. So I'm not sure why Elna decided to use a combination of Phillips and posi drive, but anyway, I have explained the differences between posi drive and Phillips before. I won't go through it now in this video. But just suffice it to say that they are a slightly different head and if you use a Phillips screwdriver on a posi drive screw it will damage damage the head of the screw. So this is now just hanging on by the belt so we can just flip the belt over there that's it three screws bam there's your motor very nice very very nice i like it uh, but that's my good test motor and let's put in this is the original customer's motor just slip that belt over there and get our screws in there now if I wasn't uh, going through and sort of explaining this in detail to you, I would probably just uh, replace the, or swap out the resistor there before I go and test this any further. But uh, I'm just sort of curious and taking this one step at a time, just so that if, uh, I got it all back together again after replacing the resistor and there was still a fault at least I would know if I do it this way whether you know where the issue might be that's good there just connect these two here and so this way we can sort of determine whether this motor is okay is uh, faulty or not by using a good known board here. Okay, so that's the test board going back on. Probably get away with just a couple of screws here. See, so this will test our motor. Two screws will do in the meantime, just a quick test. Plug it in. Yep, seems fine. Stop, go, stop, go, yep. Okay, no problem. All right, so that tells us that our original motor is good and that more than likely the issue is going to be the resistor on this board here. So let's swap that resistor. I don't have a 2.7k uh, resistor in stock right now so I'll use the one off this board here to install into here and then at a later stage I'll uh, put in a brand new one in there. As you can see it doesn't take a lot. So we just need to get this board out again so that I can desolder that. Right, and let's just quickly desolder that resistor. You can see on the back there, you might be able to see on the back through here, you can see it. So that they've cut a little bit of relief in the PCB there. I'd say that would be for heat dissipation, just to get a little bit of something through there. Yep. 
There we go. There we go. Yeah, is that burning as well? It might just be a little bit of gunk on there, I wonder. Let's do the same with this one. Oh, yeah, it's dirty. Look at this. Just nasty. There's the nasty burnt up one there. Oh, still a bit warm. <laughs> yeah, not looking too good. Well, let's get the good one in there. That's good. Yep. Okay, so there's the good resistor on there. It's looking quite clean against the rest of it, isn't it? <laughs> put the screws back in and then we'll be ready for a test here all right testing plug the foot controller in power yep nice okay fixed so that was a combination of problems there uh, so the original motor had the, the worn motor brushes, uh, fixed that, found it still had a, uh, an issue and traced that down to uh, that nasty looking little resistor there. So, yeah, running nicely there. So I'll have a happy customer because this machine uh, had sentimental or has sentimental value uh, for her. So um, she'll be pretty pleased, I think. So that's it for this one, uh, just thought I would show you some of the troubleshooting procedure on that one and I um, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much to my patrons on Patreon, uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.